Good evening, Rabbi We're going to continue from yesterday. Whoever was here will be familiar with our topic matter. We're continuing regarding the proper pronunciation of Torah and Tefillah, the proper way to pronounce things. So we were going through the Aleph Bet and uh, right, to tell, saying how each one is supposed to be pronounced properly. So we went up to, yesterday we went up to Dalid. Right, the Dalid is a very important letter. Why? Because uh, it's from the Kiyat Shema, right? The Echad. Uh, so it's supposed to be said, it's supposed to be soft. The, the, the Dalit in, in, the, in the Echad is supposed to be soft, not hard. It's not supposed to be Echad Du, it's supposed to be Echad soft, nice and soft, right? Uh, so that's the way it's supposed to be. Now we're going to go to Vav, right? Because Hey is very simple, everybody knows what's Hey. There's no machloket about that, right? Hey is Hey. But the very important, very important thing to know about Hey, <coughs> it says the Gemara, it warns us, right, not to switch Chet in Hey. Don't make it sound the same way, you know? Because each one has its own sound. So the hey is like an H sound, you know, like we have the H in the, uh, in, the in the alphabet uh, of English. So that's that's the hey sound, right? And, but het is you know it's, it's something else, deeper. So don't switch this with the other. If you do switch one with the other, you're not reading properly, right? That's what it says in the in the Gemara. You know, so a person has to be careful about that. But Hashem, we I think we understand that pretty well. There are some people, by the way, who have a problem with this. You know who they are? The Russians have a problem with this. You know, because they say like. You know, chet, hey, and hey, chet. They, they, sometimes they, they switch. Are, they Did you ever notice that? The Russians have a problem with that? They are language, no hair, isn't it? <laughs> okay, that's the problem, right, exactly. Mm. They, maybe they don't have it, so you know better than me. I don't know the Russian language very well at all. They are, don't you know? have the hey. They right, are, so okay. that's why they don't know how to pronounce that, these letters, you know, properly sometimes. They make a mistake. But a person, you know, has to, if he wants to learn Hebrew properly, he has to, you know, know exactly what the sound of each one is. By the way, there's a sidur called Kisei Rachamim, you know, which is put out by Rav Mazuz, you know, who's the Rosh Hashiva in Bnei Brak, the Sfari Rosh Hashiva over there. He's a big chacham, uh, so he put out this uh, sidur, and over there, in the beginning of the sidur, he tells you how to pronounce each letter properly, the way, proper way to pronounce. You, you know, with Masoret, you know, with tradition and everything, how to do everything the proper way. So it's a good idea to look at that sidur, you know, if a person has time. We have it here also, you know, we don't have a lot of them here, we have a few of them, you know, in the back sometimes, the old ones. Kisei Rachamim it's called, you know. So this Sidur has all the pronunciations. Not every Sidur has this, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a special thing. There are also some others who copied that, you know, and uh, did it also the same way, but uh, that was the original one that tried to do that. So anyway, good idea to look at that, but uh, getting back to as we said, right, that don't do the hey like head and don't do the head like hey. Very important, each one has its own sound. We're gonna get to the sound of the head, exactly what it is. We're gonna get to that in a second. But first I wanna talk about the vav, right? Because the vav, you know, uh, uh, there's a big problem with that a little bit, you know, a little bit, a little bit of a problem. What's the problem? That most people think it's a V sound, right? A V, you know, V, right? But the truth is, the ones who really know, the tradition, the Masoret, they know that Vav is not a V. So then what is it? Vav is a W, right? It's a W sound, right? So it's a woo, woo sound, woo. You know, so the ones who are Medakdek in Eretz Israel, Chazanim, if you listen to them, you know, the ones who are good Chazan over there, the good Sephardi Chazan, they always do the Vav W sound, right? Where, 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 when is Kartem, right? Not when is Kartem, when is Kartem. They say it in a very subtle way, you don't notice it sometimes, you know, but it's a very important thing to understand that. Uh, so the person who's saying it with a V, it's a little bit of a mistake, you know, but um, regarding all these, by the way, these things you should know, I want to tell you, you know, just as a general rule, there are many communities, you know, that have different different customs, you know. So the rule is like this, you know, we're talking here about the proper way to pronounce, you know, the proper ideal way to pronounce each letter. But there's also halakha about this, you know. The halakha says like this, a little bit different. It says that you have to do like your community does. You know, in other words, if you're chazan in your community, and everybody else, you know, is doing differently than you, what does that mean? They're doing better than you, you know. You do worse than they do, you're not allowed to be chazan in that place. You know, because everybody's better than you. So how can you be there in the Shliach Tzibur? How can you be there in the Bezer Chazan? You cannot be that over there, right? So what does that mean? If you go to a place where they say everything, you know, beautiful, don't, uh, right, don't go over there and start talking with your uh, Ashkenazi accent, you know? It's not going to work, right? You're not allowed to be Chazan over there, you know? That's, 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 that's the halakha. It says in Shulchan Aruch, right? If a person is not medakdek, at least on the level of the Tzibur that he's in, he's not allowed to be Chazan over there. He's not allowed to be Chazan, not allowed to be Baal Kore, not allowed to do Birkat even. Can you imagine? Even if he's a Kohen, he's not allowed to do Birkat Until he straightens out his language. You know? Can you imagine? It's a, so it's considered to be a halachically uh, you know, problem. 
So what does that mean? As we said, right, very important to understand. You have to be at least on the level of your tzibur, if you want to be chazan for them. You know, at least that much. If you don't do everything 100%, it's okay. You know, because the halacha doesn't require you to do more than the tzibur does. You know? But here we're talking about the ideal way to pronounce everything, right? If you want to get everything down, you know, like 100%, whatever, or 99%. We can't get everything 100%, because we have some, there are some things that we, don't, that we ourselves don't know. We don't know exactly what it is. We have some spekot, we have some doubts, we have, we have bachloket. We do the best we can, you know? And that's the idea. So a person, you know, should try to, to, to change that a little bit. If he can, you know? Make the vav into a w and not into a v. A v. You know? If you can't, it's okay. Why? Because over here, nobody does w over here, right? Nobody does. You know? so, except maybe me. I don't know. I try to do it you know, sometimes. In fact, if I, if I remember, I try to do the w. But uh, since here, people don't do it. So you can be chazan, even if you don't, even if you don't do W. No problem. That's the halakha. Okay, very good. So let's go now to Tet, right? Uh, I'm sorry, not Tet. We have first, uh, um, we have the right, Zayn. So Mechila, Zayn, right? So Zayn, it's a Z sound, you know, very, very simple, right? No, there's no machokot about that. So we can put that in the bag, right? Put it in the pocket. We got no problems with that. It's a Z sound, you know, you're a Z. You're a Z, right? We know it's a Z. Okay, so uh, uh, what about het, right? So het, het is a little bit of a tricky one, right? What does that mean? All the proper ones, the proper ones, the ones who pronounce het properly, right? Uh, they do it a little bit differently than we do it over here. So what does that mean? They go into the throat, you know? We do like, you know, here in the Georgian shul, and in most places here in America, you know, even Sephardi shuls, you know? They do like het, you know, like a ch, 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 you know? Like ch, 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 ch. But is that really the het? No, it's supposed to be in the throat, right? It's supposed to be head, head inside the throat, groni, right? So there's a there's a difference between the chaf and the head, because the chaf is like the ho 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 ho, but the head is like in the in the throat, head head. So if a person is medakdek, you should try to say the head like that, because this is really, you know, here in, in, in Israel, by the way, if you go to a Sephardi shul, and you don't say the head, you know, in the, in the throat. It's a deal breaker. They're going to throw you out of the... They won't let you be chazan over there. Forget about it. You don't have a chance over there. You, know, you, won't, you won't survive for, for 20 minutes. Right? They'll, they'll throw you out. Right? Because over there, everybody does it. You know? That's the way it is with everybody. Even, you know, the, the ones who are a little bit different, you know, like the Gruzinim and the Bukharim, you know, they also start doing it over there. When they went over there, they started doing it also. Because they heard everybody's doing this like that. You know? So, het goes into the throat. You know, het. That's the way it's supposed to be. So if you make a differentiation between the het and the chaf, that's good, you know, that means you're, make, you're making a dikduk, you're making a dikduk in the language, which is very good, you know, that's a tikkun, right? So that's what we said. So that's very important to know. The Rashi, by the way, talks about this also, you know, even though Rashi was, Rashi was Ashkenazi, you know, he was from Tarfat, he was from France. But he was the early Ashkenazi, you know, the ones that really knew what they were doing, you know, what the, how, how to say everything. Rashi had a masoret, you know? So what does that mean? That he writes on the chumash over there exactly how to say Many of the letters, you know, if it's in the throat, it's in the garon, if it's in the mouth, where where do you pronounce it? Rashi talks about that on the chumash. Okay, very good. So then we got we got the het, right? The het. Now, what about the tet, right? So here also, I want to tell you something interesting about the the, the letter tet. So you know, the, actually, the Georgians here they have a good one, you know. The Georgian tet is the is the good one. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? There's, there's a difference between the taf and the tet. It's not the same thing. So what does that mean? Taf is soft, you know, two, two, like a T sound. But the tet is like a two, 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 two. You know, like, you know, the Georgians have this also, you know, two. It's a little bit stronger, harder. Two. Not two, not two, two. Not the same thing, right? So there is a little bit of a difference between the tough and the tet, it's not exactly the same thing. So a person also has to know that. It's a good idea to, to be uh, medakdek with this. I know, I know that uh, by us, you know, there were some people who were medakdek with this. That's the way it should be. So what about the yud? The yud is pretty simple, right? So everybody knows that what that is, right? It's the e sound, right? Uh, so it's like the i or, you know, whatever. So that we know. Uh, so what about the, uh, what about the, the, the chav, right? So there, if it has dagesh, Tagush, it has a tretili, tretili, the point inside. It's k sound. K, right? And if it's soft, no dagesh, right? Rafui, 
So it's ch, like ch, 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 right, like that. Uh, so it's not exactly the same thing, right? There's a difference, obviously. Now, what I want to tell you is like this, right? Since we got to the chaf, what's the difference between the kaf and the kuf? Right? They have the same sound? Not exactly, right? Here also the Georgians, by the way, they do it good. You know? <laughs> if you ever notice, right, the old Georgians, you know, the, the ones who are from the old school, you know, from the old, old country. Cool, cool, kuf is cool, cool, cool sound, heavy, you know, heavy, cool. But k is a soft, like an American, you know? You know, like a kid, a kid, you know, kids, soft. But k is more like inside, inside the, 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 the mouth. It's more deep, k. As we said yesterday, right, the language which, which um, teaches the best way to pronounce Hebrew is Arabic. If you look at the Arabic, it's the best way. Can you shut that off, by the way? Thank you. So, uh, yeah, best to shut it off altogether, by the way, if you can. If you can shut off the phone altogether. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, uh, so anyway, yeah, I take it outside. Thank you so much. Thank you. So as we said, right, that the uh, the kuf is heavy, the kaf is light, like the American style, you know, like a C sound, like a K sound, like a kohen, you know, that's a kaf. But kuf, right, that's already something else. Kodesh, kodesh, it's deeper. So a person should try to also stress that as well. If a person knows how to say all these things. If you look at the Arabic language, you see that there is a difference between this and that, right? They say differently, these two sounds. You can see, you can hear the difference like from night and day. Okay? So that's kaf. Now, what about uh, lamed, right? Lamed we know, it's right, uh, the L sound. Everybody knows that, right? Mem also we know. We know the noon, right? We know the samich. So right, what's next? The ein, right? So the ein is, uh, you know, the Sephardim have the ein right, you know, and the Ashkenazim have, they have it wrong. That's, the, that's basically what it is, right? They say ein like Aleph, you know, that's the problem. So there's no difference between the ein and the Aleph. So the Gemara warns about this, you know, that you cannot do that, it's Asur to do that. It says in the Gemara, whoever says ein like Aleph, he cannot do Birkat HaKohanim, it's Pasul, he cannot be Chazan, he cannot do, right, to do uh, Baal Koreh, nothing. That's what it says in the Al-Ha. You know, as we said, right? How do the Ashkenazim do it then? Because that's their Masorah, so everybody does it like that, you know? So then their Chazan also does it like that, it's okay. You know? But by us, that we do the real Ayn, you know, deep, you know, inside the throat, Ayn, Groni, we do it inside the throat, so therefore, there's no room over here to go up here, right? In the, in the, any any Sephardi Shul, and to do Ayn like Aleph. It's a mistake. Whoever prays like this, we cannot be Chazan. Well, we have to bring somebody else, right? Maybe we should bring somebody from Eretz Israel to teach us how to, how to say everything properly, right? Somebody from over there. So I'll, teach you, I'll tell you a story about that, by the way. But anyway, right, uh, getting back to what we said, so the ein has to be in the throat, not like the aleph, right? Don't make the ein into aleph, and don't make the aleph into ein. Don't make this mistake, right? Each one has its own sound. Aleph is like an A sound. Ein is, is deep in the throat. Make sure you get that right. Uh, it's very, very simple, right? Pay. So we know what that is, right? The P, the P sound, right? It's the P. Right? And if it's if it's Rafui, no, no Dagesh, then it's a Fe sound, right? It's a F. Like a telephone, you know? Like a phone. That kind of sound, right? So we know that, right? Uh, <clears throat> so what about uh, Tzadik? Right? So here also, this is a tricky one, right? Tzadik. Why is that? Because a lot of people... Unfortunately, you know, they learn from the Ashkenazim the wrong way to say tzaddik, you know, which is a tzu, tzu, like a tzu. This is not the right way to say tzaddik. So how is the right way to say tzaddik? Like the Georgians used to say, you know, the old Georgians, you know? Like a tzu, tzu, tzaddik, 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 you know? Like that. It has to be more like an S, almost close. Closer to an S sound, you know? This is the proper tzaddik. Tzaddik, you know? It's not a tzaddik. This is not the proper way to say it. Most people say it like that, but it's not the proper way. What can you do, right? That's the way it is. So, but in a person, in a place where they're medactic about that, they say tzaddik, softer, more like an S, right? As we already said, right, the kuf is, is deep inside the mouth, so it's like a ko, 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 ko sound, not the ku sound, the light ku, like the Americans do, more deep in the throat, right? And what about the resh, resh, 
So here, right, it's the, the truth is that they say, they, they say in the books, the Sidu that we mentioned, right, Tisir Achamim, the Reish is like more like a tough sound, like a rrrr, you know, a tough, a tough R, you know, like a, not a soft R like the, the, the Americans have. It's more like rrrr, you know, deep, like a more and more, more strong. Rrrr, like that, you know, so if a person can be back deck all that with that, it's also good. Then we know what's, what's Shin, right, and we know what's Sin, so Sin is like a Samech sound. But the truth is, there's probably a little bit of difference there between this and that, right? Sin is not Samech, and Samech is not Sin. So there is a little bit of a difference, right? Probably this, the, the, the Sin is a little bit more deeper, you know? Like maybe perhaps, perhaps, you know, I'm not really sure, but maybe perhaps like the Spanish sound, you know? Like they do a shh, like a deep S, you know? Shh. It's a little, it has to be a little bit deeper. That's probably, that's probably the way it has to be done, you know? Because it's close to a shu. So the shu sound is Shin, and the, sound, and the Sin which is on the left side, right? It's going to be like close to a samech, but not exactly. Okay, very good. So what about tav, right? Tav is also a very important letter to know. With this, we finished the whole alphabet, right? Then we have to talk about the nikudot also, the vowels. But the tav, right? This is a, this is a major mistake with the Ashkenazim, right? What they do is they, they do a, a right, a saf, you know, saf, you know, which is a total mistake, right? They do like a samech, the soft one, the rafui one, you know? This is not, not good, right? So what they do is they do if it's if it's dagesh they do tough like our sound, T sound. If, if it's if it's a rafui, no dot inside, they do like a sa, like right, you know, like. Uh, and this is wrong. This is totally uh, right. Pesach. Instead of saying petach, they say pesach. You know things like this, right? These are this is a total, total mistake what they do, right? What's the reason probably why they they, they brought this in the Ashkenazim? Is because uh, they wanted to differentiate between the taf and the, and the, and the thaf, you know? But the truth is, right, the, the Masoret says, the tradition, according to what we have, the tradition, the rafui taf, with, without, the, um, without the dot inside, you know how you say? The th sound, like a thing, thing. You know, th, like th in, in English. This is the proper way, right, to say it. Not everybody's medakdik on that, you know? Uh, most people don't, are not medakdik. But if a person wants to be medakdik, this is the way it's going to do it. And by the way, if you look at the Arab language, they have that sound too, right? The th. They have that th, th sound. There's th and there's th. So the Arabic language is, if you want to study Hebrew, right, the proper way to pronounce, as we said, the best way to get it, by listening to Arabic. Even though Arabic is a little bit different, obviously, it's not the same as Hebrew, but in terms of pronunciation of the letters, 100% they have everything, right? No, uh, no, uh, no deviation. That's, that's really what, what it is, right? So, I want to tell you a story, by the way, before we go to Arbit. Something really funny, right? That uh, It's not really funny, but it's, you know, whatever. It's, it's entertaining, let's put it this way, right? So the truth is, you know, that there was a... The Khatam Sofer, the famous Khatam Sofer, right? Who was a great uh, Prosek and the big Rosh Yeshiva in Hungary, right? Uh, over there. He built a big Yeshiva over there, and he had a lot of Talmudim, thousands of Talmudim, and so forth and so on. He was a big Chacham, uh, Ashkenazi Chacham in Hungary. And he was the son-in-law of who? Of Rabbi Akiva Eger, right, who was the in, the, in Russia. Right, so these were the Gdoli Ador, you know, in that generation. You know, Khatam Sofer, Rabbi Akiva Eger. Maran Ravadia, he told us, Rabbi Akiva Eger was even bigger than Khatam Sofer. In, in, uh, in Svara, you know, in, in Pilpul, in uh, derivation and things like this. But the Khatam Sofer had a bigger yeshiva, you know, he, he built a bigger yeshiva. Everybody has his own mazal, by the way, you know, that's the way it is, right? Some people are Zochet, have big chokhmah, you know, big knowledge. Nobody knows like him. Some people have, have Zohar, not so much knowledge, but they have a big yeshiva, you know, a lot of Talmudim. This is also a big zikhut. Each one has his own zikhut, right? But anyway, the Khatam Sofer was the Khatan of, the, uh, of Rabbi Akiva. That's what, that's what happened, right? It's a whole story about that, how they got introduced together and so forth and so on. So what happened was that uh, Khatam Sofer's rabbi, his name was Rabbi Adler, right? Uh, Yonatan Adler. This was his name, Adler, Ashkenazi name. <laughs> So this, this rabbi was very interesting, right? What's the interesting thing about him? They say that even though he was Ashkenazi, you know, as we said, right, they weren't hungry. So um, over there, they say everything Ashkenazi, but he you know, realized that the proper pronunciation is the Sephardi pronunciation. You know? He realized that. He understood that. So what happened was that he wanted to learn, you know, even though he was raised Ashkenazi, he wanted to learn how to pronounce everything Sephardi. The Sephardi way. They didn't know over there in Hungary how to do that. You know? They didn't have YouTube uh, or you know, anything like that, right? To check check how to pronounce things. They don't have nothing. So they have to bring somebody, you know, physically, 
to the place, and you know, so they brought this chacham. What he did was, Rab, Rab, you know, Tan Adler, Rab Natan Adler, he brought this uh, uh, big chacham, Rabbi Chaim Modai, from, uh, from Turkey, right? And he taught him how to say everything Sparty way, because he wanted to switch, you know? Can you imagine? He switched it. He was Ashkenazi, but he switched to Sparty because he knew this was the proper way. So they say that this rabbi, Rab Chaim Modai, he sat with Rab Adler, Rab Natan Adler, for three years teaching him how to do everything Sparty way. Three years he taught him. Can you imagine three years? It's like, you know, you get a college degree, you know? A left deal, right? The, you know, bachelor's degree, right? <laughs> what can take three years? But that's what that's, he sat with him for three years. He invited him to come over there. He taught him. So once he learned everything, how to do everything the Sparty way, so you know what he did? He made a takana in a shul that nobody can go up and pray Ashkenazi way, you know, anymore. Everybody has to pronounce Sparty. So he would always be the chazan, because nobody else knew what to say the Sparty way except him, you know? So he would always try to be the chazan, because he didn't want somebody going up and saying the Ashkenazi way. Can you imagine? So this is the way he was, you know? He was very medactic about this. There was also another Bikacham, there was also medactic about this, Rabbi Pinchas Halevi Horowitz, also a big Ashkenazi Chacham, he was Abderdin in Frankfurt, Germany, over there, right? He also learned the Sparty way of pronouncing everything, and he took on also to pronounce everything Sparty. There were, as we said, right, several Chachamim like this, you know, from the Ashkenazi side, who decided to go into the Sparty way because they knew it was the proper way. You know, all the more so us, right, as we said, that uh, we were born this way, you know, this is our tradition, so we have to stick with our tradition. And uh, that's what it says, right, in the Shlomo Melech here. What does it say? What does that mean? It says, You know what that means? Yeah. Don't abandon your customs of your forefathers, right? If your forefathers spoke that way, and this is the right way to do it, so why give it up? You don't want to do it the wrong way. What's, uh, you'll be crazy to do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.